Hi, I'm Megfer and welcome to my complete guide to Bedrock Iron Farm Mechanics. And I'm going to go into a lot of detail about some of the technical aspects of iron farms and how they work. It's one of the more interesting farms on Bedrock. There's some really cool stuff in there. It's also quite easy to get things wrong, even though in a way they're quite simple to build, right? Um, so we're going to look at all of that. We're going to be touching on village mechanics as well, because you can't really do an iron farm without a village and without villagers. So we'll, we'll be looking at that. What this isn't, though, is a guide to building an iron farm. I'm not going to show you how to build an iron farm. This is about if you want to design your own, you want to understand how they work, maybe you want to fix one you've already got, then um, this will really help you out with that. And I'm also going to cover why I've got an iron farm on this picture here with three platforms in it, um, a bunch of skeletons and a single pod with 40 villagers in. And by the way, there's five nitwits in there as well. Um, so yeah, so we'll cover all of that. Let's go. So firstly, a confession. I've already lied to you. This isn't actually a complete guide to bedrock iron farms. It's an incomplete guide because I'm not really going to cover production rates at all in this video. And the reason I'm not going to is because there's a guy called Rufus Atticus who has done two really incredible videos already on iron farm mechanics, part one, part two, where he goes into a lot of detail, um, particularly on rates and optimizing the farms. And he's done a much better job than I could. So I'd definitely say go and check out those videos uh, on his channel and I'll link them down below. If you want to cut to the chase though, in part two, his second video at 22.35, 22 minutes, 22 minutes, 35 seconds, there is a table of rates and it will show you the rates you might expect for different kinds of iron farms. It's a really cool thing. Um, I use it all the time just to look stuff up. So um, definitely go and have a look at his videos and check out that rates table. The only thing I will say about production rates is that a single farm over a long-term test can't produce more than 404 iron ingots per hour. And it'll only do that if the golems die instantly. And they don't, right? It takes a little while to get your golem to where you can kill him. So um, even though it's quite a lot of variance over a one hour test, you might get more than 404 some hours and quite a bit less some other hours. Um, anyone who says that their iron farm does more than 404 per hour on average is, they're, well, they're wrong. Okay, it, it, it won't, it can't. Uh, that's just the maths of the game. So 404 per hour is absolute top end. Typically a really good iron farm, you might be getting 380 an hour. So in the Nether update 116, uh, the iron farm mechanics of Bedrock changed quite a lot. And in the release notes, in the change log, this is what it said. It said that only one golem will spawn for every 10 villagers. There's a minimum of 20 beds and every villager has to have a bed. And at least 75% of villagers must have worked in the past day. That's Minecraft day, okay, not real life day. So in the last Minecraft day, 75% of your villagers must have worked. And we also know that iron golems spawn in, a, in an area which is 16 by 6 high by 16 around the village centre. And the village centre is a really important con concept that we'll come back to. And they'll only spawn on a full solid block. And I'll talk about that a bit later as well. And they won't spawn inside a solid block. So they've got to have room to, to spawn. Okay, so let's go through the main things one at a time and only one golem will spawn for every 10 villagers. What does that actually mean? Does it mean you will only get one golem and then that's it? There can only be one golem alive at a time. So if I've got 10 villagers, one golem will be alive. I've got to get rid of him uh, by some means, and then another golem can spawn. So if the game had decided through you know its random kind of number generation that it was going to spawn another golem before the first one was killed, then you lose that spawn. It doesn't happen. If you've got 20 villagers, you can have two iron golems at a time. And if you've got 30 villagers, you can have three at a time. So you can see that actually, as you get more and more villagers, you can have more and more golems. And so it's less likely that the game will try and spawn one and not be able to. And it makes quite a big difference. Maybe it's less than you thought, but actually having going from 10 villagers to 20 villagers will get you an extra 30% more iron. And going from 20 villagers to 30 villagers will get you between 4 and 5% extra iron on top of that 30%. So um, if you go beyond 30, 
it's pretty much diminishing returns. There's not a lot of gain there unless you're really trying to trying to finally optimize your iron farm. So if you've got less than 10 villagers, you get no golems at all. You have to have at least 10. Any number of villagers between 10 and 20, so you've got 11 to 19, it makes actually no difference. It's exactly the same as having 10, um, except you've got to have collected more villagers to do it. So it's a bit of a waste of time. Between 21 and 29, it's exactly the same as 20, except you need more beds. Because remember, every villager has to have a bed. So you need as many beds as you have villagers. That's just a bit of effort and uh, resources that you don't need to waste. And uh, like I said, there's almost no benefit to having more than 30 villagers. You'll get, you know, fractions of percentages in difference. And the faster you can move the golems, then obviously the um, quicker the game can spawn another one. And so the less important it is that you have more villagers. So if you could kill them instantly, 10 villagers is absolutely fine. And it would run at exactly the same rate as a farm with 100 villagers. Um, but you can't. So actually, the time to kill the golem is quite important. And conversely, the more villagers you have, the less important the time to kill the golem is. So if you've got a fairly low killing method, then having more villagers helps more. Right, let's talk about um, the bed requirements. So we said that uh, there must be a minimum of 20 beds. So if you've got 10 villager, a 10 villager farm, you must still have 20 beds. You can't have less than that. For 20 villagers, you need, well, the same, it's 20 beds. Uh, if you've got 30 villagers, though, you need 30 beds and so on. And they must all be linked to their bed. And if they're not linked to their bed, you won't get golems. So if there are more villagers than beds, then obviously you won't get any golems. And if there are fewer than 20 beds, you get no golems. And having too many beds, so if you've got a 10 villager farm, but you decide to put 40 beds there, it just makes it a lot more difficult to manage where the centre of your village is going to be, because it's based on beds. We'll come to that in a minute. And um, it just takes up more space. So just you know, have the minimum number that you need. And then that final of the three rules that came in the change log was that at least 75% of villagers must have worked in the past day. So if you have 10 villagers, eight of them must have worked. I know that's more than 75%, but if it was only seven had worked, that'd be less. So at least eight must have worked. 20 villagers, 15, and 30 villagers, 23 of them must have worked. And uh, the villager working hours, they don't work at any time of day and night. They work between six in the morning and eight in the morning minecraft time that's one minute and 40 seconds in real life and they also work between four in the afternoon and five in the afternoon early evening and that's 50 seconds in real time so in total there you've got you know two two and a half minutes yeah two and a half minutes um out of the 20 minute day that those villagers actually will work and it's during that time that they have to do that their job and have access to their workstations so just a note that six o'clock is when they start working. That's also the start of day uh, in Minecraft. So if you went into command prompt to the time set day, then that is the start of the working day for a villager. And just bear in mind, there's nothing in the rules that says that a villager must always be linked to their workstation. They just have to have worked in the past day. So they don't need to be, it's not like a bed where they have to be linked to it all the time to get golems. They don't. Um, and that's important for some designs. It's also theoretically possible to have a really good farm where 25% of villagers are actually made up of nitwits. So um, if you have 10 villagers, two of them can be nitwits, 20 up to five of them can be nitwits. And in a 30 villager farm, you can have up to seven nitwits. And I know everyone says, don't put nitwits in your own farm. Well, if you've got a method of making sure your villagers are working all the time because they can get to their workstations, then actually having nitwits, some nitwits, up to 25% is absolutely fine. Right, so iron golems, they spawn in this 16 by 6 by 16 area around the village centre. And I'm going to go into a lot more detail about village centre in a minute. But um, essentially, it's a six block high region and a square around them. Okay, so... The golems also will only spawn on a full solid block. And that would be something like um, these ones over here. They spawn on, um, what's that? That's some sort of wood, isn't it? 
um, or pumpkins or indeed bedrock. And I think there might be the only mob who can spawn on bedrock. Um, I don't think you're going to be making your platform out of bedrock, but if you did, then you would get iron golems. They won't spawn on transparent blocks. So leaves, glass and um, slabs. So they won't spawn on those. But actually, in this scenario, we've got a solid block with a partial block above it. They will spawn and they'll look like they're spawning on top of the partial block. So if you've got a wall with slabs on top, um, then at the edge of your iron farm, you might have seen in some cases that golems will spawn on top of the slab. Actually, they're spawning on the block below, but popping up onto the top of the slab. Okay, so solid blocks, yes. Transparent blocks, no. Partial blocks above a solid block, yes. And they can spawn inside blocks. I said before they can't spawn inside a solid block. Any block that you can walk through, they can spawn in no problem at all. So that's things like lava, water, signs, buttons, etc. Um, but they can also spawn inside some um, transparent blocks. So beds, for example. If you've got a bed which is at their head height, they can spawn inside that. They'll have their head in the bed and um, they won't be able to move. So they won't be able to walk around. You won't be able to push them with water. It's something you generally want to avoid. Okay, so those blocks you can walk through or indeed some partial blocks, they can um, spawn in those. So we'll take a little deviation and we're going to talk about direction because knowing which way you're facing can be really important for an iron farm. Um, probably a lot of you already know this, so I'll do it quite quick. But essentially you can use plants. So a pumpkin stem will always point to the northwest. A sunflower will always face east. If you're using coordinates, if you've got coordinates turned on, then when your X coordinate is increasing, you're going towards the east. That's your first coordinate. When your Z coordinate, the last coordinate, is increasing, you're going towards the south. And you can use the sky, because just like in real life, the um, sun rises in the east and sinks in the west. So if it's kind of going from your right to your left, um, as the sun moves, then you're facing north. And then maybe the official way of doing it is using a locator map. And on a locator map, you've got this marker. If that marker is pointing straight upwards, then you're facing north. So let's talk about um, the detail of where an iron golem spawns. So this only applies to naturally spawned iron golems. It doesn't apply to if you're creating them yourself. So if you try and build an iron golem, it won't always spawn in this way. But essentially, if I spawn, if a golem spawns on that pumpkin, then it actually spawns on the northwest corner of the block. And that means it's overlapping those three yellow concrete blocks around it. And that's important because if you had a wall there instead of um, a flat surface, then the golem wouldn't be able to spawn. So you've got to remember that they spawn on the northwest corner. This comes back to knowing which way you're facing and make sure they've got space to do that. So that's important for optimizing your platform size. Also make sure they don't spawn outside your platform or get stuck in some you know, transparent blocks on the edge of your platform. And we can't really talk about iron farms without talking about villages. So I'm not talking about this kind of village in the picture uh, with the you know, pretty fountains and the flower beds and you know, little grass paths and stuff. Uh, I'm talking about a, an artificial village, one that we create for a farm. So, to create an artificial village, you need one villager linked to one bed. And that's a village. Simple as that. And of course, you can have lots and lots of villagers in a village. And you can have many beds and workstations too. And all of those beds and workstations are called points of interest or POI. So beds, bells, workstations are all a type of POI. Um, and that's in the game data files and the code. But that's what they're called. That's what I'm going to call them. So how big is a village? Well, one that we build ourselves, and in the initial size of that village is measured from the first bed we placed. OK, so when the villager links to a bed, he um, creates a village and that village will be 32 blocks out in the X and Z coordinate directions from the bed and 12 blocks up and down. Now, the, the pillow of the bed is the centre block. So it's 32 blocks to the west, 32 blocks to the east of the centre block. That's a total of 65 blocks. So your total village size, initial village size, is 65 by 65 by 25 high. 
and it's a box. Uh, it's not some kind of weird, you know, odd shaped sphere. It is a box. Okay, so coming back to that point about the the golem spawning in that 16 by 6 by 16 area around the village center. Where's my village center? We just talked about it. Um, it's usually the bed of the first villager that you put in. And what the game does is it holds a list of villagers and their POI. And their POI, like I said, beds, bells and workstations, and it holds it in that order. And it's got a list of all the villagers with each one of their bed, bell and workstation. And the first POI of the first villager defines the center of the village. Now, if that villager doesn't have a bed or a bell, but he has got a workstation, then that workstation of that first villager will define the center. It doesn't go and find the first bed. It's whatever order the villagers are listed in, it just works its way down this list and goes, there's no bed, there's no bell, oh, there is a workstation, that's my center. But in an iron farm, every villager must be linked to a bed. And so we kind of know that that first villager will always have a bed, right? So it's always going to be the bed of the first villager in the list of the game files. So here's our first villager, here's his bed, and here is the center of our village. Now, the, the village center itself, the village center block is at the pillow of that bed. But for an iron farm, and that 16 by 6 by 16 area, we actually start counting from the lower northwest corner of that pillow. Okay, so again, those directions are coming in handy. Now, some things can change, right? So another villager might come along and he links to a workstation, which is outside the boundary of the original village. What happens? Well, the village extends out. So you can see it's gone from 65 blocks to 67 blocks here. And it just extends out enough to encompass that extra bed, uh, sorry, extra workstation in this case. But because it's done that, the village center actually moves. So now the village center isn't where you think it is anymore. It's not at the bed. And so we need to be quite careful that this doesn't happen in our farms. So any typical iron farm should fit within a standard size village. There should be no problems, no reason why it should extend. Just make sure you don't put down beds, you know, or I don't know, blast furnace somewhere um, as a little base for yourself near your iron farm or build any other village farms with village tech or POI near them. Okay, so the other thing about the um, order of these villages is it's not actually fixed. So Minecraft will not guarantee to you that these villages will always be in the same order. So sometimes after a crash, maybe, or after um, a game update, the order in which these villagers are held in the files could change. So now suddenly I've got a new villager of top of the list and his bed will be the center of the village. Well, if his bed's there, that's where my center goes. The whole village shifts and indeed it might resize itself. So you can see here it's gone back to 65 blocks because all my POI are happily within the confines of that default village with this new bed as its center. Now, most people know by now that when you talk about a bedrock iron farm, people say, you know, you've got to be 96 blocks away from any other POI um, or 100 blocks. Well, some people say 150 blocks. The actual answer is you have to be at least 64 blocks from the edge of the village in the X or Z direction. Okay, so Go 64 blocks away, after that is a safe place to build your iron farm, to put the closest POI in your iron farm to that original village. In actual fact, 96 blocks horizontally from any other POI is a really good answer because if that nearest POI happened to be the center of the village and the village is 32 blocks from there, and then you add 64 blocks from the edge, then you get to that 96. So if you leave that 96 block gap, then you um, will always be safe. If you really know what you're doing, then you can build a little bit closer. So if you know exactly where your village centers are, uh, and therefore you know where the edges of the villages are, you can just go 64 blocks from those. You don't have to worry about the nearest POI. 
generally don't do that. Just go 100 odd blocks away. The same thing's true for vertical distance. And here it's again 64 blocks away from the village edge in the x axis. But this time the village is, the default village is only 12 blocks tall um, from its center block. So you get a distance of 76 blocks. Okay. If you go any closer than that 96 blocks or 76 blocks, then there's a danger that whatever you place down will merge into your original village. And if that happens, you just get like one enormous village with its center, some, you know, some random place in between the, the new village you're trying to create and the old one, and your farm will be completely useless. So again, you can go a little bit closer if you know exactly where your village centers are. Generally, don't bother. Make sure you're 76 blocks above the original village. So let's have a look then at how we would lay out our platforms typically. And um, what we need from our platforms is we want to have the beds grouped around the middle of the platform because one of those beds will be the village center. We want the village center to be in the middle of the platform. Uh, we want to make sure that both of our platforms, because we can only have two, uh, both of our platforms are within that fixed high vertical spawn range. I, I know I've just said we can only have two and I showed you a picture of a, a three platform iron farm earlier. We'll come back to that. Um, but within that spawn range, I can only have two platforms and I need to have a three high space for my golems to spawn in. And I need a method to, to move the golems around, kill them, get them to a collection system, whatever. So you can have a lower platform above that. Typically, you'd have water, so you can move your golems about, water streams, and then you need two air blocks, and those two air blocks give space for the iron golem spawn. Then you'd have your beds, then you'd have your top platform with more water on it. So does that meet all of our objectives? Well, yep, so we can place our beds kind of wherever we want underneath the platform, so they can be grouped around the middle. We've got our golems spawning um, on each platform because both are within that sixth block space. And um, I've got space for golem to spawn and a, a method to move them around with the water. So that's typically how you'll see an iron farm designed. There are other ways of doing it, generally not very efficient ways. So then let's look at it horizontally. So uh, this is a top-down view. I've put 20 beds down and I've uh, my preference is to align them like this underneath my platform and um, I've got my red bed which is my village center and the northwest corner of that bed is actually where I start counting from for golem spawning purposes so if I do that counting I count out from there eight blocks I count down the way eight blocks and out to the side eight blocks and that looks like that ought to be my platform right fill all of that out I've got 16 by 16 space fantastic that's my spawn area well, it's not, because iron golem spawn on the northwest of a block, and that means that if you had walls around the outside of this, then you are blocking spawn spots for the iron golem. So actually what we need to do is we need to extend this on the north and the west side by one more block. Um, now, if you've got a drop there, it doesn't matter. They don't mind spawning, teetering on the edge of a drop. That's perfectly fine. But if you wanted to build a wall, then you need an extra space on your platform before you put that wall in. Sadly, that's not the right answer either because I've assumed that red bed is my center bed, but do I really know that? Mm. Maybe for the start, maybe it'll be reliable for a while, but if the order of those villagers changes ever, then they could reconnect their beds. They could, all sorts of things could happen. It could be any of the beds in my own farm, which actually end up being the center. So let's have a look at these two. Um, now I have to count out nine blocks in the north and west direction from, from um, any one of my beds and eight blocks in the east and south direction. So there we go. Suddenly my platform has become quite huge. It's 26 blocks by 18 blocks. But that is the perfect um, spawning platform for iron golems. And the same kind of thing applies if you've got a platform with a you know a drop chute in the middle and your beds are ranged around that. In some ways, it's almost a bit worse because your beds are um, further away from the middle. Um, so you have to make sure you count out 
to get to the right place and cover all the spawning spots. It doesn't make a huge difference if you, you know, if you missed the line of spawning spots, it's not going to really badly affect your rates. Um, there's more of a danger that you end up with golems spawning where you don't want them to spawn and therefore not dying, and that will affect your rates. But if you carefully cover the edge of your platform so that they can't spawn on there, then you should be okay. It won't make a lot of difference. But we're talking about the mechanics and the efficiency. So this is the size of platform that you would need for this bed layout. Right. So village are linking to their POI. They link in a space which is 16 blocks horizontally and four blocks vertically from the lower northwest corner of the block where their feet are. And what it actually means is that they can link to a workstation or a bed which is four blocks below their feet or one which is two blocks above their head. And therefore have a bed in that area and they can um, connect to that no problem at all. So what about this guy over here on the left? What can he connect to? Well, actually, if he's got a workstation over there, he can connect to that. And the reason he can connect to that is because it's actually put in range by any villager in the village. So if a workstation or a bed is within 16 by four blocks of any of the villagers in the village already, then that villager can connect to it. And that's a really important point because if you're building an iron farm with say, you know, multiple pods of villagers, maybe you've got two pods of 10 villagers each, and you're thinking, well, that's good. I can put them, you know, more than 16 blocks apart from each other. They won't be able to connect to, to each other's pot, to each other's workstations. So that's great. That's not true. Any of those villagers could connect to any workstation in the farm still because they're put in range by the villagers in the opposite pod. So choice of workstation. There are a lot of different kinds of villagers and um, there are some which are better than others. So if I get this right, we've got what librarians, farmers and fishermen. And they will typically stop working during rain. So ideally avoid those blocks if you can. Then you've got your stonemasons, your clerics, your leather workers and your uh, weaponsmiths. They all have partial blocks or non-solid blocks for their workstations. And when you reload the game, there is a danger that villagers can clip out through those and fall out of their pods. So again, try to avoid those. So the blocks that you might want to use are these ones, a smoker, a loom, a fleshing table, a smithing table, a blast furnace and cartography table. They're all great. They're pretty much um, the same with one small exception, something like a fletching table is really cheap to, to make. On the other hand, it does burn in lava. So if you've got lava around it, then um, that's not the best choice. Something like a blast furnace doesn't burn in lava, and that would be cool for that, but they're a bit more expensive to make. Okay. If you're using multiple pods, there's a bit of a trick here. So those, those two pods of 10 villages I talked about just now, if you made one pod out of cartography tables and one pod out of fletching tables, and you traded with every villager, so that you only had cartographers in the cartography pod and fletchers in the fletching pod, then actually they can't ever cross connect because they're stuck in their professions because you traded with them. So they can only connect to a workstation in their pod. And this is a trick that old guy used in his Majolna iron farm. I'm sure I'm uh, pronouncing that wrong, but in his Majolna iron farm, it's a great iron farm, go check it out. He used that trick to make sure that the villagers never cross connected to a workstation they couldn't reach. So yeah, that's that's a really cool thing. It does obviously cost a little bit more, makes it a bit more complicated to build, but uh, that could be worth it. Once you've got all these villagers into your um, into your pods in your iron farm, you want to make sure they're safe. And villagers are susceptible to lightning, and when they're hit by lightning, they turn into witches. And we don't want witches in our farm. They're no good. They don't produce iron golems. It's a load of rubbish. So we need to find a way of protecting our villagers. And we do that with a lightning shield. And they're horrible, ugly, monstrous things. But um, a good lightning shield is made of solid blocks, three blocks above the head of the villager. So on you know two, two blocks of space between the villager's head and the bottom of the platform or the roof. 
it's got to be seven by seven centered on the villager's head and ideally spawn proof the roof as well if you want to now we talked about killing the golems as well and i've done a little tier list for this because i thought it'd be quite fun and it, do you want to guess along with me so drowning fall damage is that a good way of killing golems uh, no it's not because they don't die from fall damage they don't die from drowning what about these ones then so magma blocks cactus campfires suffocation there are other things as well um so i haven't covered all of the blocks that cause damage but these are all good examples they're all the same and it takes 50 seconds to kill a golem and interestingly i did try putting a cactus and a campfire and you know and suffocating them at the same time it still takes 50 seconds it's because of the damage cooldown i think so it's no advantage trying to do more than one of those at a time next on the tier list is lava and dropping into another village so the reason why it says killing the golems and killing is in inverse commas in the top of this um, page is that you don't actually have to kill the golems to get new ones you just have to remove them from the village so as long as they're not a, a member of that village where the iron farm is then the uh, iron farm can can produce a new golem and one way to do that is to drop them off the iron farm and down into another village it's got to be more than 76 blocks below remember and they will join that new village and go out of the cap on the iron farm both of these methods in my testing take about 12 seconds then you go to trident killers and a standard trident killer of an unenchanted trident um, i was measuring this with my finger on a stopwatch and it's a bit less than 9.7 seconds i think i haven't got it exact and then if you look at a trident killer uh, with impaling five and your golem in water so that the impaling five effect um you know actually works on him then i was really surprised by this the answer is less than 3.2 seconds again my finger on a stopwatch so not exact but um that was really quick uh, and i didn't think it'd be that quick actually there's one more method i haven't talked about and that's using nether portals and it's right down there at the bottom it's just above never um but if you push a golem through a nether portal they will have left your village in theory but in practice they haven't because the village still remembers them and you have to wait for a timeout to occur so there's a timer and it kind of counts down and eventually that golem will be dropped out of the village when it hasn't been seen for long enough or they have to join a new village to drop out of the village and the problem with sending them to the nether of course is there's no village over there for them to join unless you had another player kind of sitting there waiting to to do that so you're waiting on this timer and the timer takes too long to get an efficient iron farm so nether portals just aren't the way to go oh by the way they also can't spawn in nether portals so if you were going to try and build a farm out of just uh, obsidian and nether portals uh, that doesn't work they won't spawn inside it cats on the other hand hundreds of them okay so try and kill seem to be the best way the fastest way certainly of killing um golems iron golems but they are a little bit hard to design because iron golems are quite big and um i've got a design for a three by three trident killer which works really really well but i haven't published it at the moment and it also means you have to place it in the middle of your farm and use a drop shoot type design so you lose the spawning spaces at the middle of the farm in return for having a faster kill time so the choice is yours you've also got to remember with lava that you can actually arrange it on top of your platform so that the golems are being killed whilst they're still on the platform and the other thing i wanted to mention about the village drop method so dropping them into another village is that that can be a bit variable in timing so if a game's lagging a bit or you know it's just decided to go a little bit slow for some reason into connecting golems to the new village it could take a little bit longer or it could be a bit faster but 12 seconds seem to be a pretty reasonable time and i'm i get really really good rates for my own farm that uses that method okay i just want to go and talk about some iron farm myth because i see this all the time um people talking about this stuff and most of the time it really doesn't matter so let's go and debunk some myths so there's a story about uh putting water at the villagers feet okay so the myth is if you place water at the villagers feet it stops them delinking from their workstations 
Do you know what? It's partly true. So it's not really a myth. Uh, it does work. They will not link to delink from a workstation if they've got water at their feet because it breaks their pathfinding. There's nothing special about it. Any method of breaking their pathfinding will have the same effect, including just hold them in a one by one space. So if they're stuck in a one by one cell, they can't pathfind anyway, and uh, there's no point having the water there. Now, if you want to have a farm where the villagers, you know, merrily walk around and can get to their beds and their workstations and have a little chat in the corner and whatever else, then fine. I don't think it's going to be a great iron farm. Um, and you could use the water trick then to stop them pathfinding and delinking from their workstation. But actually what it does is it stops them moving, right? Because if they can't pathfind, they won't move. And so they won't even be able to get to their workstation. They won't be able to wander around. And that kind of defeats the object. So... I would say keep your villagers in one by one cells with workstations around them and that will give you the most efficient time farm. The next myth I want to talk about is the cat cap. Um, and I only came across this one recently, but it was on the wiki, oddly, uh, that there's a cat cap. And if you have too many cats in your village, it stops iron golems from spawning. I'm here to tell you that that's complete rubbish. Um, and there's also a second part of that myth which is that the game will either spawn a cat or an iron golem. So that if you allow cats to spawn, then it reduces the number of iron golems you get. And therefore you should keep your cats kind of, you know, keep however many cats uh, are produced by a farm kind of safe in a little enclosure, so that no more spawn and the game will just spawn iron golems. Well, it's not true. So iron golems spawn independently of cats and there's, you know, a, a random number generator which decides when iron golems will spawn. So those are both myths. Is there any reality to any of this? Um, I think that an iron golem will not spawn in the space where there's already a cat. So it's kind of possible that you might get a spawn attempt fail because there's a cat already in the space where the iron golem was going to spawn. I wouldn't worry about it honestly. So cats, not relevant. The next one is about zombies. And um, the idea here is that a, um, a zombie getting near to a villager will scare that villager. And as a result of that, he'll produce iron golems. Well, that's only true in Java edition. So in Bedrock edition, there is no such concept of scare mechanics. You don't need zombies. And whilst you're at it, you don't need bells, you don't need doors. They have nothing to do with an iron farm. Right, how about distance from an iron farm? And this is something else which um, I, I thought I understood. Um, and when I tested it, what I thought was true turned out not to be true. And uh, it's uh, wrong on the wiki, I think. But if you remember, if we have an iron farm here centered around um, our platform, it creates a village, which is 32 blocks by 12 blocks um, from that center block. Minecraft measures the distance at which you can stand from the village edge again. And so Steve here can stand these distances away from the edge of the village. So that middle column tells you how far from the edge. And it varies by sim distance. So I didn't realize that, but it does. So on sim four, it sort of depends exactly where your iron farm is in the chunk and where you are in the chunk, um, but it's 48 or less. And um, on Sim 6, it's 48. It goes up by 16 each time until Sim 12, where you could be 96 blocks from Village Edge or potentially 128 blocks from the Village Centre. And the same thing applies actually vertically as well, except it starts at 32 blocks for Sim 4 and then goes up by 16 each time. So on the Sim 12, which is the maximum, you can be 108 blocks away from your Village Centre. So let's talk about simulation distance. Oh, I should probably mention actually in that last slide, um, be careful that of this point here, the whole farm must also be within sim distance. So on sim four, um, it's quite easy to um, end up with your farm outside of sim distance if you're going, if it's in the wrong direction. So just be careful of that. So these are your representations of sim distances for sim distance four, six and eight. And what I'm talking about now is how many farms you can get into that space. 
well on sim distance four on a plan view so looking down from the top um i can get and i'm if i'm standing here in this chunk and get an iron farm there an iron farm there there's be 112 blocks between them which is more than enough um but i can't get an iron farm here and here because that's only 64 blocks away from this one so that red these two red ones i can't build and that's why you can't build reliably four iron farms on the same level at sim 4. however what you can do is you can build another two on top of the first two and that's absolutely fine because you can be um 40 blocks away from each of them and they will be 80 blocks away from each other which is plenty of distance going on to sim 6 you can now fit uh four iron farms if you're very clever about how you arrange them um they've got to be in this configuration and you're right on the edge of your sim distance so you've got to make sure your farm isn't overlapping outside that sim distance so just be really careful if you do try and build four on sim six uh, and in fact of course you can then build another four on top so you get eight on sim eight then you can easily fit those four farms in a plane therefore eight altogether and when you move on to sim 10 and sim 12 it becomes um, a little bit more interesting again. So Sim 10, I can fit four iron farms quite easily. And Sim 12, I can fit five because the horizontal distance I'm allowed to be from my farms is increased enough for me to get five into this area. And um, a little note here to say how many farms I can get for single player loading it. In Sim 4, it's four. On Sim 6, it's eight, if you're really careful with positioning and you've got a uh, one chunk farm. On Sim 8, eight easily. Sim 10 is 12. And Sim 12, it's 15. 15 iron farms at 400 ingots per hour, if you had a really efficient one. So that's what, that's uh, 4,000, 6,000 ingots per hour. That's pretty good, right, for a bedroom iron farm? It's a, a huge thing, of course. You, you can have 15 separate iron farms inside uh, your simulation distance, but it's a lot of iron. And this method doesn't require any of your villager stacking you might have heard about, um, which is really flaky, frankly. I would never try and do it because I just don't think it's reliable. Uh, but this method is just using the standard game mechanics of the distances you can be from the farm your simulation distance and just arrange them correctly to make sure they can all be loaded and all function. Okay, so I said I'd come back and talk about um, this three platform farm. Why has it got three platforms? Why has it got skeletons? How did I get 40 villagers into a pod? These are all good questions. Okay, so before we go and look at the farm, um, I just want to say thank you for watching this if you got this far. If you think I've made any mistakes or omissions, then please do let me know in the comments and I will post any corrections. And also, um, a lot of effort went into making this. Uh, so I'd really appreciate it if you drop me a like and let other people uh, know about the video as well. So um, thank you very much. And your subscription is also greatly appreciated if you fancy seeing more videos from me in future. So check out the channel, uh, but let's have a look at this farm now. So here it is, um, and I want to show you this farm not because I think it's the, the um, best farm in the world or I think you should build a farm like this, but it kind of just uses some of the mechanics in an interesting way that I want to show you. So first of all, um, I've got my beds lined up in the centre, as I said before, so there's no hole in the platform, anything like that. And I've extended my platform to be big enough to capture all golem spawns. I've got 20 beds along here. But I've also got 20 beds down here. And that only works um, if I've got three platforms because I don't know which bed is necessarily going to stay in the village centre. But if it's one of these ones in the middle, then my middle platform and my top platform will spawn golems. If it's one of these, the bottom and the middle platform will spawn golems. So either way, it's all fine. Um, the other thing that we talked about was killing the golems quickly and uh, you'll see there's no killing method here in this farm. What I'm doing is I'm dropping them down into a village below 
and uh, into that glass just down below me there is a villager and a bed so that's a village it's far enough away that that's a separate village the iron golems fall into and join i've also got coral fans along the edges here so that the golems don't teeter on the edge uh, and not fall off so they'll pathfind over that coral fan but fall straight through it and also my skeletons so what the skeletons are doing is when they see an iron golem i don't know if we'll get one but when they see an iron golem they will fire uh, arrows at it draw its attention the iron golem will turn around and run towards them and therefore leave the platform quicker and there he goes falling down and then this monstrosity of a villager pod um, is actually a really cool thing because in here there are 40 villagers and five of them are nitwits but there are 40 in there and every day they all work because what I'm doing is even though most of these workstations can't be reached I keep shifting them back to forwards with a piston and wherever they move they come back and the villagers reconnect them in a random order and after a little while, all the villagers have actually connected to a workstation they can work at. And it's really reliable. I've never had it fail. Um, every day, all of my villagers, proper nitwits, are able to work within this pod. So that's with 40. I've got versions which do 30 and 20 as well. But I think that's um, quite a cool thing. It does make loading new villagers a lot easier. And it makes the farm very, very reliable as well. So that's it. That's my um, very silly three platform iron farm. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.